indigenous people. Uh, an excellent place to start and a very important place to start. Um, I included this topic in uh, this presentation because, as we all know, we're standing on Duwamish land right now. All of North America uh, belonged to uh, indigenous people. And I thought it was really interesting looking at some of the different and diverse and unique ways that indigenous people, particularly along the Pacific Northwest coast, interacted with the ocean in a way that was very different than I, as a Western scientist, was brought up uh, to look at it. This is, the, this is an artistic representation of Pukmis, the ocean whaler man spirit. Um, and it is just my personal observation uh, looking at analogies of what this looks like to me. This is a picture of a white beluga whale. <laughs> Uh, are we looking at two different things, or are we looking at something that somehow overlaps? Something that I've noticed about the way that indigenous people told stories and represented the cultures, uh, represented the natural world around them, was uh, I've noticed the ways that these two have a huge shared bond, right? Stories are the natural world. And so, are we, are we looking at two uh, different depictions, something that is just a made-up story and something that we find in the real world, or do these share some sort of connection? Looking at some of the stories that indigenous people told, there, were, uh, there used to be so many fish that you could walk across the rivers on their backs. That's a story that was told. Yet we don't see that nowadays. That's obviously a myth, right? But we're looking at decreasing populations of fish. The meaning of the story has a basis in a physical reality, a tangible reality that we experience, or that at least that we used to experience. And with decreasing fish populations, not only are the Pacific people's uh, resources being impacted, but because of that, directly their culture is being impacted. Uh, and so they've been working really, really hard for centuries now to preserve their culture and fight for their rights, because to them, it's all the same thing. I don't mean to put this idea in your head of indigenous people as archaic or uh, kind of out of date. Uh, many of the tribes of the Pacific Northwest are thriving uh, in our modern environment. This is a uh, this is a picture of the Pacific Canoe Journey up and down the Puget Sound. That just happened a couple weeks ago. But as long as we're talking about stories, I thought I might share one with you. This is a story that was first recorded uh, and written down in 1905. Before that, it was all oral tradition. A long time ago, longer than two men can live, the Quileute people along the coast were in trouble. There was no food. The whales were being chased away, as were all of the fish. The people were starving. And they found out that it was the spirit of killer whale who was chasing away all the food and making, uh, making the Quileute people so hungry. And they were worried. They prayed and they prayed. And it was finally the great spirit of Thunderbird she was so powerful that lightning would shoot out of her eyes. Big enough, as big as two canoes set end to end. When she flaps, there was lightning and thunder in the sky. She took pity on the Kuliut people and went to attack the whale spirit. She dug her claws into whale and dragged him out of the sea. And the ocean rose and fell. And as a great wave, uh, as, as the ocean rose, it threw canoes up into the air and many people were injured. There are stories of canoes ending up all the way from the Puget Sound back into the Pacific Ocean. And still, they continued to fight. Thunderbird lifted Whale up into the uh, air and dropped him on the ground. Um, and many trees were ripped up by the roots. And to this day, you can still see prairies. And... Uh, the earth was shaking, the very mountains themselves were shaken with the force of their fight. And finally, Killer Whale was subdued. He gave up. And Thunderbird was victorious. The food came back to the land and the Quileute people were saved. A 
it just so happens that if you add up all of the time uh, and looking at when this story originated in the year 1700, we find tectonic, seismic uh, evidence of a earthquake and tsunami that hit the coast of uh, the Pacific Northwest. Again, are we looking at fictional stories or are we looking at a very real representation that has survived in just an alternative format? Again, I don't mean to put in uh, this idea that Pacific uh, indigenous people are the only ones who have interacted with the ocean. Uh, I lived for seven years on the island of Guam, uh, a very watery place, and uh, I learned a lot about the migration of Pacific Island peoples all throughout uh, the Pacific Ocean, through hundreds of islands, there are Pacific peoples. There are indigenous peoples living on essentially every habitable scrap of land over thousands of kilometers apart. How did this happen? Well, 3,500 years ago, people from Southeast Asia with the most advanced uh, naval technology and the most advanced navigation of their day traveled, and over the course of the next 2,000 years, spread across the Pacific. These people had an understanding of the ocean as static, and these islands as moving around on the surface. And yet they were able to navigate fine. The cultures that exist on these islands still to this day are intrinsically tied to the sea. Some of these islands, Tuvalu or Vanuatu, stand only a few meters above the sea, uh, the surface. So during a storm, or with sea level rise, all of these things uh, are a huge threat to, again, not only their culture, but also their resources and the way that these are tied together. And yet there's hope. Again, with uh, fighting uh, against things like climate change and sea level, fighting against habitat loss or uh, loss of their resources, these people can reclaim and take care of the resources and the culture that once belonged to them. Resources and cultures that are intrinsically dependent upon the ocean. So with that, we've looked at one topic. As we start to build further, we'll see ways that these interact with each other. But for now, let's look at some connections and pick another topic. <laughs>